Hello, my name is Jonathan Bill Sparks. I'm a technologist at HPE, and today I'm going to talk about containers at scale. The agenda for my talk today, HPC containers at scale, challenges of adopting cloud native technologies on HPC systems, in particular, the adoption of Docker and Kubernetes, and finally, go over some lessons learned while running containers at scale, both HPC and cloud native orchestrated containers. Previous talks have covered different HPC container runtimes. So I won't be covering those specifically. What I will be covering are observations and configurations at scale. Specific scaling topics, huge page support, workload manager integration, such as Slurm or PBS, host drivers and libraries. Let's start with the first issue, Linux huge pages. The graphic illustrates a benchmark, Quantum Expresso. It's a quantum mechanical materials modeling application used in HPC. The left graph illustrates two runs, one bare metal using Cray Linux environment, CLE, a minimal OS kernel distribution based on SUSE, and NERSC's shifter container runtime. As can be seen, there's a difference between the application runtime performance between CLE and running in the container. The difference increases as the node core count also increases. On the right, the same run but this time we identified the performance impact was due to running within the container without mounting the host's huge page file system. This performance impact was only noticed when running multi-core on many nodes. A simple OSU latency benchmark didn't show any performance issues due to the fact that it was a single core running between two nodes. So why did this happen? Cray MPI uses huge pages for MPI mailbox communication. When running on multiple cores without huge page support, the application started to thrash local memory and hence lower performance. We did have to use Cray pro provided profiling tools within the container to determine where the bottleneck was. Another takeaway was some performance issues are not just within the application, but within the framework itself, and in this case, Cray MPI. So on to the next topic, workload managers. For workload manager integration, MPI applications will need access to job launch, spool directories, and PMI data locations within the container environment. In this example, we're using Singularity. We bind mount specific directories into the container environment. And the above use case here illustrates using Slurm and HPE's parallel application job launch service, PALS. As with the previous example, mounting workload manager dependencies, the same goes for host libraries and drivers. Here we are bind mounting from the host, application, job, and workload manager libraries into the container for use by the application. Next, we'll discuss running cloud native applications on HPC systems. Now let's look at some issues while running cloud native software on HPC systems. We will talk about Docker, Kubernetes, and device driver support. The security concerns of Docker in shared environments are well documented and understood. Administrators can use AppArmor, SE Linux, SecCom, and UID mappings, yet giving users access to the Docker socket has security issues. One issue noted is the lack of auditing and logging within a container. One quote I like, this is from Dan Waltz from Red Hat. Docker has no auditing or logging built in, while sudo does. Basically, he's drawing an analogy to running privileged commands through Docker that has no method of logging which command is executed within the container, and running sudo, which does. 
Let's look at the Docker storage graph in diskless environments, common amongst HPC deployments. Docker uses a, direct, a directory graph structure, the default valid Docker, to hold a variety of metadata, including Docker images, networking information, different plugins. This directory structure cannot be shared between Docker instances. Each Docker daemon requires its own private graph. On HPE systems, we use a solution whereby we logically partition the parallel storage for use by this graph, giving each node its own private storage. Let's move up the stack a little now. Let's move to Kubernetes. Running Kubernetes requires a set of kernel module, modules typically not associated with HPC optimized environments. The runtime environment to host cloud software needs to be more generic than the HPC environment. And as such enables more kernel features. After all, it's really supporting cloud native software, not HPC. Features required are IP tables, IPVS, different file system support, virtual ethernet support, network device drivers support, etc. We have stuck to the standard deployment model of Kubernetes of masters and workers, no change there. But the networks used for infrastructure and applications have changed. We support both IP and RDMA over the high-speed networks. Kubernetes deployment on our HPC systems use network options such as Intel's Multis and SRIOV for RDMA access. Once we have the basic Kubernetes cluster up and running, we can leverage the Kubernetes or CADES API. And as such, most vendor plugins, device plugins, uh, so far we've tried have worked. These are shown above. Mellanox HCA support, uh, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPU support. This concludes a lightning talk on how we have scaled uh, containers in HPC and how we have adopted cloud native software on HPC systems. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.